We have one more incredible story. Our next speaker is Ross Mason. He created the Healthcare Institute for National Renewal and Innovation. And he has a very long career, but I would like Ross to come over to the front. Uh, Ross needs a microphone. He's a venture capitalist, he's a philanthropist, he has done so many things to improve so many other lives. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Great. It's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. What an incredibly moving story about forgiveness. It's an honor uh, to be here. Uh, just over 10 years ago, uh, I had had a real estate business in Russia for a dozen years and a career as a private banker in, on Wall Street and in Europe and Russia. But I left uh, my career and ended up traveling around Africa um, and, and volunteered in a hospital in Zambia where 82% of the patients had AIDS. And it was really, a, it was in the summer of 99, really a moving and life-changing experience for me. And I was just overwhelmed with the compassion, love, the community, and the sense of joy uh, that people with such limited resources were coming together to try to address such a life threat to Silicon Valley. Uh, and after selling a company, worked on a project in Germany where there was 17.2% unemployment where Volkswagen was headquartered uh, with a, a per year period and led some of the uh, leading technology firms in the world, Google, PayPal, Ash Jeeves, OpenTable, Red Envelope, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Groupon, many of the names you've heard about. And we were part of a half billion euro investment in Germany to try to help address unemployment, which went from 17.2% to 6.4% over a decade with 341 startups that were done in healthcare, IT, mobility, and entertainment. And I created Henry in California at that time to try to combine those two experiences. How could I bring together the compassion, love, and community that I'd experienced with such limited resources in that African AIDS hospital with the drive, innovation, and the world? Half of the follow-on investment that we, uh, my mentor received in those 422 angel deals was from Sequoia. And their one investment criteria was, it must be big. If you're solving a big enough problem with the leading innovators, if personal computers are the future, or the internet's the future, or mobile applicants, then we're, we're going to make money as a venture capitalist. And so I, I took that approach and said, I want to cause, solve really big problems with leading innovators. And innovators are critical. Think about what Bangladesh would look like without Muhammad Yunus. What if he'd grown up in India? Think about what Silicon Valley would look like without the Fairchild Aid or Steve Jobs, or we're in Atlanta, Georgia. If I told you I was gonna move four people away when they were 20 years old, and I took away Robert Woodruff, the founder of Coca-Cola, Bernie Marcus, the founder of Humble Rights Movement, and I moved just those four individuals somewhere else when they were 20 years old, Atlanta and Georgia would be a very different place. So I decided I wanted to solve really big problems with lead. Georgia, I was appointed to our state health board, and that was where I wanted to start was the Georgia ecosystem, although we do projects that are state, national, and global uh, in scale. But when I started just in Georgia at that time 10 years ago, the United States that year spent $2.7 trillion on health care, yet the World Health Organization ranked us 37th in health care quality, we are 28th in life expectancy. In the state of Georgia, we have 159 counties in Georgia, for you, those of you who aren't familiar. 57 didn't have a doctor, 67 didn't have a primary care physician, 88 had third world health care demographics. We led the nation in the percentage of our population with TB and AIDS. We were number one in cancer mortality, second in child.